Good morning, or depending when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always told, I had a voice radio, so today I am bringing you round four from the Sutton Coldfield League Challenge. We've already seen three rounds, a couple of them quite quick, but... That's the way it goes. I assure you, this is not going to be it. You can even tell by the length of the video. Now, when I started doing this, I wasn't at this tournament. The lovely Ben Rollison recorded this for me and sent it over for me to commentate. And since he sent it over, about a week ago as I record this, all I've heard from people is, wait for round four. And, oh, dude, just, just, just wait until you see round four. Or round four is amazing. It says round four. So, if you've not watched any of the other videos, and you're thinking, ah, should I carry on watching this, should I turn it off? If ever there was going to be a video you don't turn off of mine, ladies and gentlemen, this is the one. Now, we are playing single game here, and we are in the Primal Clash onwards. The rotation has happened, so this is your opportunity to watch these new cards, these new decks, these new strategies in action. And just from the matchup here, we've got an absolute doozy. Now, on the right, we've got Connor Bird, a very good player who came very close to qualifying for Worlds last year, playing the powerhouse and one of the best decks in the format, or at least presumed to be, Darkrai Giratina. On the left, we've got Sha'ai Burton. Now, I'm going to be honest, he did send me a message, and he said it's SH-AYE, Sha'ai. Now, if I'm pronouncing that wrong, Sha'ai, I apologise I'm not a terrible person. I'm trying my best. I got your message. Thank you very much for messaging me. It was very nice of you, sir. I do hope I am pronouncing your name right. And if I'm not, I do hope you forgive me. I might just call him Mr. Burton instead. We shall see. So, we start off. Connor's going first. He has got a Shaman in the active. Gets a Giratina on the bench right away. Opposite the Gibble of Mr. Burton. Now, he is playing Talonflame in his Garchomp list, and I don't like playing favourites very often, as we see a Trainer's Mail, which nets Connor a Sycamore, and then he plays a Skylar straight away, rather than the Sycamore. So Connor doesn't think he needs to draw a whole bunch of cards right now, he's got a decent setup, he just wants one card to get himself going, an Ultra Ball comes down, and I'm willing to bet he's going for a Hooper here. Oh, that's a nice discard. There we go, with the Hooper. Same as we saw in the previous video, Scoundrel Ring allowing him to search for any free EX Pokemon. And I'd be surprised if we didn't see a Darkrai, a Shaman, and to be honest, probably a second Giratina here. But it depends what he is playing in the deck. I don't know. I kind of like that I wasn't at this tournament, because it means I am watching it as if it was live. I don't know who won this round. I don't know what happens, and I don't know exactly what they're playing. So this is going to be a surprise for me, ladies and gentlemen, just like it is for you. And I'm going to be honest, I am, I'm on Shai's, you know, I'm on his, his team here. I know that might seem a little bit unbiased, a little bit biased, I should say, but anyone who's watched this channel a lot knows how much I love the Breakpoint Garchomp. Now we see an Aveltal here coming down. And actually, we see a Hydreigon as well. Now, to be clear, and a Shaman, I didn't, you know, I was told he was playing Darkrai Giratina. I did not realise he was playing those cards. Now, the Hydreigon is just to help the retreat of things like Giratina. And of course, he's going for a Veltal. Because Darkrai is weak to fighting. Garchomp says, hey. Whereas Eveltal is resistant to fighting and therefore is going to have a much easier time. Now, we see an energy on the Shaman. Is there an energy? He seems to have changed his mind. And Sha'ai here is really, you know, just letting him take it back, being very nice. Now, we see the Trainer's Mail coming down. Second one he's played. Look at the top four cards of your deck. You may put a Trainer card you find there other than Trainer's Mail into your hand. Looked like he might not have had any targets there, but he did look at his hand, so... Maybe there was one. Either way, if there were any targets, there were none there that he wanted to get. So he's just popping them straight back into his deck. Now, Connor is going to need to get an energy on the field here. But of course, well, he's going to have an energy. We know he's got one. He went to attach it to the Shaman a moment ago. The question is what he actually gets going. Now, oh, and we see a Max Elixir here. Look at the top six cards of your deck. You may attach a basic energy there to a benched basic Pokemon. Again, like I said in the previous round, I'm assuming you've watched the previous rounds. If you haven't, 
Use the links in the description. Go watch them now. Come back. We'll be waiting. In a deck like this, I imagine that Connor is playing double dragon energy. So I therefore imagine that he's probably only playing 7 to 8 basic energy. And if you're playing 7 to 8 basic energy, you wouldn't expect statistically to hit more than 2 out of your 4 max elixir. So we would expect to see Connor fail a couple of them during this game. We do see the energy on the Eveltal, and that makes sense here, because Eveltal can take a couple of hits. Oh, and we see a level ball here. Now, I don't know exactly what he's playing, but I assume he's going to be going for a Gibble here. When, certainly when I was playing this deck, what I was going for, and we see Bursting Balloons there straight away, that's going to be annoying. And it looks like he's playing a full complement of four. I'm not seeing too many other Pokemon. With this deck... What you really want to do is just stream Garchomps. Now, Garchomp is a very, very, very good attacking Pokemon. And Garchomp preys on EX decks. It's a shame that Shy didn't start with Talonflame. Because if he started with Talonflame, he's got the attack for 1 energy, 40 damage, and search your deck for any 2 cards. As well as having free retreat and 130 HP. And that means that it would be much easier to get going. He's gone second. He could attach an energy and just use that attack. It would really help him set up. You play four of them. Even though it's a stage two, you can put it into your active position at the start of the game. If you start with it. But he didn't start with it. So all four of those Talon Flames, I'm assuming he's playing four, are completely useless. He does, however, get a silent lab down, turning off all abilities for both players, for their active Pokemon, which will include the Hydreigon and the Giratina, although Giratina's ability stops it being attacked by Mega Pokemon. And I'm going to go out on a limb here and assume that Sha'ai is not playing Mega Pokemon. Just, just putting it out there. He might be, but I'm going to go ahead and assume that he's not. Now, Garchomp here, it's all about getting set up. When Garchomp is set up, he's got a really, really useful attack, which preys on EXs really quite nicely. You can do 80 damage, or 160 if it's an EX for 2 energy, but then when you start building in strong energy as well, then 1 strong energy, you're doing 180. That's enough to KO a Giratina EX. And actually, even something like an Aveltal, 2 strong energy puts you up at 200, which goes down to 180. If Connor's playing Fighting Fury Belt here, which will increase the HP of basic Pokemon by 40, that's going to be big, because one of the things I found playing the Garchomp, and I've had a lot of experience playing Garchomp, oh, and there's an Enhanced Hammer on the Strong Energy, that is upsetting. And there we see a Parallel City, oh, and that's a beautiful play from Connor there. He's played the Parallel City, now... Parallel City has two sides, but the side that Connor has used for himself means he can only have free bench Pokemon, and he used that to get rid of the Hooper and the Shaman, both of whom provide easy prizes for Sha'ai, without really giving much of a benefit to Connor. There we see a Max Elixir, and we do see that one hitting. Two energy on, and he will have enough to actually get the KO here. Evil Ball does 20 damage, plus 20 for each energy attached to both Pokemon, active Pokemon. So with two energy total, that's 40, plus the 20 base is 60. It is enough for the KO here. Now, it doesn't look like Sha'ai is playing Shame in EX here. And I like that. I was always... Now, I played one in my deck, but that was back when we had Karina, because sometimes you would want to play Karina search for an item and a fighting Pokemon, you would want to play Karina and search out an Ultra Ball to get a Shaman to get set up. Without Karina, you don't have that play anymore. And the whole point of this Garchomp deck, and it looks like he hit another Max Elixir there, so he's already hit two this game, which is as many as he really should be expecting. So the fact that you know, I wouldn't play Shaman in this deck. Maybe one for an Ultra Ball, but that would be the absolute limit. The whole point of the Garchomp deck is that you are KOing EXs easily and you're not giving up prizes yourself. And when you get KO'd, you're only giving up one. Now, the fact he's got free energy really helps because now he can use Y-Cyclone, 
which does 90 and puts an energy to the bench. So he does 90 and puts an energy on the Giratina there. Now, this Garchomp there, and we do have the Rare Candy, and we do have the Garchomp, so now we're rolling. The real shame here is the Enhanced Hammer that came down from Connor. Had there been no Enhanced Hammer here, then Jai would be able to just attach that second Strong Energy, and he would be able to get a one-hit KO here on that Eveltal. Now, it's not the end of the world. He's still got Turbo Assault, 80 damage, well, 60 plus 20 for the strong, minus 20 for resistance puts it at 60. Oh, we see a fairly nasty Sycamore here, but it happens. 60 damage, and he gets to attach an energy card from his discard pile to one of his Pokemon. And when we say energy, we mean energy. That includes strong energy. So what he can do here is attach an energy to his Gibble, and it can be a strong energy using it to use bite off over and over and now we see that bursting balloon oh and we see a a silent lab coming down here which is really really handy now what that bursting balloon means is that if connor goes ahead and attacks he has got to take six damage counters here and then he gets to KO, let's assume that Connor does get the KO on the Garchomp here. He then gets the KO, but then Shai's going to come back, get the KO, and then they're going to be even on prizes. And I don't think he's actually got the KO at the moment. Now we see an N coming down here. Both players shuffle their hands into their decks, draw a number of cards equal to the remaining prize cards that they have. Connor is going to get five cards, and Mr. Burton is going to get six. Now, Garchomp has 130 HP. We see a total of five energy between the two actives. Ties by 20 is 100. Add the 20 base is 120. That means that without another energy here, there is no KO from Connor. Which means he's got to give up that Eveltal without taking a KO and will actually put Mr. Burton into the lead here. And that is going to be awesome for him. That Bursting Balloon, I love Bursting Balloon. Oh, there we see, and now that is going to be a KO. The Fighting Fury Bout was exactly what he needed. Now he's gone from 120 to 130 damage on the Evil Ball, which means he will be getting a KO on that Garchomp, which is upsetting for me. Sorry, and just to be clear, Connor is a good friend of mine. I know Connor. We converse. I would consider him a good friend. I like Connor very much. He's a lovely man. But he's not playing Garchomp, and he's playing against somebody that is playing Garchomp. And j just for anyone out there watching, if you are ever playing Garchomp, I will be cheering for you. Unless your opponent's playing a, something like Mamoswine or Donphan, which I think is probably fairly unlikely. Um, I don't think it's the best card in the format at the moment, but certainly Garchomp is one of my favourites, if not my favourite card in the format. I will put a link in the description to a video where I played Garchomp at, I believe, a city championship last year. Now, I did technically cheat, I believe, because I evolved a Gibble the turn I put it down. But other than that, if you want to see me playing a Garchomp deck or just a different version of Garchomp, I'll stick a link in the description. And if I forget, just tell me in the comments. So, we are talking crunch time here for Shy. He's got the Bursting Balloon. He needs a Rare Candy Garchomp. Oh, he's got Rare Candy. He's got Ultra Ball. So, he can get it here. The question is, what, what's he got in his hand? What can he give up? He has no choice. He's got to do that. Now, the other problem is he's not getting a KO here because of the Fighting Fury Bout. If it wasn't for the Fighting Fury Belt, he would just be able to, assuming he had a strong energy, of course, he would just be able to attack for 60, and that would be the KO. As it is, he is going to have to almost KO the Avaltal, then let the Avaltal hit the Garchomp, and then that will KO the Avaltal 
although he will need an extra energy. Garchomp's only going to have one energy here, which means the Valtor's only going to be doing 110. Four energy is 80, plus the 20 base is 100, plus the Fighting Fury Belt. So Connor will need to put a fourth energy on the Avaltal and KO himself in order to take the KO on the Garchomp next turn. That is an awful lot of resources going into one KO. Now we did see a trainer's mail coming down there and he grabbed a super rod and just put some of the Garchomp pieces back into his deck. Now I think he's got... Yeah, so we see the Octopal there with the N and the Lysander. I think he's got a Sycamore in his hand. So what Chai's going to be able to do here is play the Rare Candy, evolve up to the Garchomp, then Sycamore, discarding his hand of zero and drawing seven new cards. Now, the question is, is Chai playing Eco Arm? That allows him to shuffle some of his tools back into his deck. And that means that he can reuse those bursting balloons. And I, I love, I absolutely love the bursting balloon call here. Because if it wasn't for that, I don't think, and there is the, oh no, it was, well, it was a Versus Seeker, which he used to get a Sycamore. So I'm, I'm totally counting that. Now, he does get a Gibble, which he needed. Free tools, I should say. Free Kawama gets free tools back. Now, he does get the Gibble, which is huge, because otherwise it was an energy for the win. Oh, and it's not a strong energy, which doesn't matter, actually. Makes no odds here at all. In fact, I prefer the non-strong energy play here. As it is, this will do 40 damage after resistance. That will put the Avaltal on 160. He'll have 50 HP remaining. And the Bursting Balloon will get the KO. If Connor... Oh, I, that is so good. I was just about to say, Connor is going to need a Lysander here to take out the Gibble. So he can take a prize without giving up his Eveltal while he attacks. Oh, I love this play here. Because now there's a Bursting Balloon on both the Gibble and the Garchomp. Meaning, if Connor attacks with that Eveltal, and I don't know what else he's going to attack with, he has got to KO the Eveltal. Not only that, but there's a strong energy on the benched Gibble, which means there is a genuine chance next turn that Shai can go ahead and go Rare Candy Garchomp and then attack again to get the KO on the Evel uh, sorry, on whatever EX gets put up in his stead. We could be seeing, you know, by the end of, of Shai's next turn, we could be seeing four prizes for him. I'm not saying they will, but that is a genuine chance here. Now, it's going to depend on what he's got in his hand. He's going to need a rare candy. He's going to need a Garchomp. Now, I don't... I think he's used two candies so far. I believe he's used two rare candies. So there will be two in his deck, assuming he hasn't discarded any. And assuming that there are none in his prizes. If he doesn't have them, the game is probably over very, very shortly here. Although, he could... He could use Gabite Sand Tomb. 20 damage your opponent's active Pokemon cannot retreat next turn. Forcing you to have something like a switch. And given that Connor is playing High Dragon, which helps the Dragon Pokemon to retreat, there could be a bit of mileage here in actually using the Gabite to trap something in the active for a couple of turns using that Sand Tomb attack while he sets up. Just st st keeping them in the active, stopping them retreating, and then just buying a turn or two. Oh, now this is a long shot. I admit it's a long shot. But if I has Energy, Rare Candy, Garchomp, Lysander here, then what he can actually do is, and remember he's getting two prizes if the Eveltal attacks, then what he could actually do is take the two prizes from the Avaltal, then Lysander the... And we know there's one in his discard, so if he draws a Versa Seeker, that would be as good. He could then Lysander the Giratina, KO that, and get rid of all the energy on Connor's side of the field. That is an 
a play that he could make next turn. Now, I don't know whether he's got the cards to do so, but oh my goodness, would it not be beautiful if he did? That would make me very, very happen in, uh, happy indeed. Now, he won't get the KO without another energy here, remember. He is going to need... Oh, he just Y Cyclones. That's very interesting here. And I like it. It's got to be the right play. He's not getting a KO anyway. So you might as well just do a bunch of damage while conserving that energy. And we saw him put the energy onto his, onto his Giratina there. Now, if he doesn't have the... Of course he's got the Garchomp. Why would he not have the Garchomp? And he's got Rare Candy Garchomp. That's so good. I love that. Lysander here would be absolutely, utterly huge. And I want to say that he's used all four of his Bursting Balloons here. So he is going to need an Eco Arm. Oh, and he doesn't have it. Now, here is the argument for playing a Shaman. Right now, he's playing an Ultra Ball. Now, I don't think he's playing any Shaman. We haven't seen any yet. And I can't see any in his deck. But if he was playing a Shaman here, he could play the Shaman, draw, I think he draw four or five cards, and then if he hit a Versa Seeker, he takes out the Giratina, and that's basically game. And that would just be huge here. We see the Sycamore, Connor has got to be relieved. I mean, we, the, the high five happens if you've got an empty hand and you play a Sycamore for seven, discarding no cards. But that high five for Connor must also have been a little bit, thank goodness he doesn't have a Lysander. If Sha'ai had had a Lysander there, had he taken out the Giratina, that would basically have been game there. That would have been it. Because Connor has no energy on the field, he's used a whole bunch of Max Elixirs, and there is already a spare Garchomp there on the bench. Trainer's Mail there, I believe he failed it, so a Big boost for Connor. An argument there for just playing one Shaman in the deck. The other thing I will say about playing one Shaman in the deck. Right now, Connor has four prizes to take. And Ja'ai has two Garchomps out. So... You know, why would you not go ahead and... You know, you put the Shaman down. Okay, Connor can take out the Shaman... Well, who cares? Who cares if Connor takes out the Shaman, quite frankly? Because Connor takes out the Shaman, and then, well, whoop de doo quite frankly. You've still got the two Garchomp. The Garchomp are the ones that are, and especially when you get two energy on all the Garchomps, your one-hit KOing EX is left, right, and center. So why would you not? I mean, it makes perfect sense. But then again, you might start with a Shaman, etc. And that was just a, a fairly long-winded way of basically saying you want here potentially to just have a Shaman. It is worth having one Shaman in your deck. So, we see the energy come down on the Hydreigon. We see a Faded Town. Faded Town puts two damage counters on every Mega Pokemon between turns. Now, oh, he only needs an energy here. Ah, oh, no, he doesn't because of the, um, there's a Fighting Fury bout on the Giratina. And, and <laughs> this is one of the reasons why playing, and we see a Trainer's Mail there for a, a Rare Candy. This is one of the reasons why playing Garchomp makes me very, very nervous. Because, and we see, it looks like Sha'ai is literally playing four Talonflame and four Gibble. So the only basics he's got when he doesn't start Talonflame are those four Gibble. So that means... Oh! And he's just had to pass a turn. He has no bench Pokemon. Now, it's a long shot here. But if there's any Max Elixir left, and if Connor were to hit a Max Elixir and attach an energy, and he can't now, he's already attached to the Hydreigon, he could actually KO the Garchomp right here for the game. It's not going to happen. But it's an interesting one. Now, Hydreigon can do Shed for, nine, for 80 damage. And he's kind of got to because we see all that energy there. Oh, sorry, all that damage on the Giratina. That Giratina can't take a hit. 
So here we go with the Garchomp. And... Oh, will Shy have a bursting balloon here? Here's my thought process. If he puts a bursting balloon on that Garchomp, he basically guarantees a tie. Oh, he's got the bursting balloon! That's amazing! Because here, he might only have 30 HP remaining, but there's no bench Pokemon. If Connor doesn't attack, then that Garchomp stays alive and can KO something next turn. Here, Shy's going to do... Is it 180 or 200 he's doing here? It is two. Is it 200? Has he got two strong or one? He's got two strong, so that's 200 damage. Now, Hydreigon has got a Fighting Fury bout. He's got 220 HP. And I think Connor's only play here might be going to Sudden Death. And let, let make no mistake about it, Connor is the favourite in Sudden Death. Absolutely, Connor is the favourite in Sudden Death. We'll talk about that in a minute. Because we don't have... Zerosic in the format anymore. We don't have Startling Megaphone. There are no ways at the moment to get rid of, outside of attacks, there are no way to get rid of these tools. So Connor can KO the Garchomp, and he has a win condition. He has taken Shai out of bench Pokemon. But then Jai is going to take his last two prizes... And he's got a win condition. And let's be clear about this, ladies and gentlemen. Either win condition will do. One win condition is not better than another. So it's not, oh, you know, I took six prizes, he wins the game. No, no, no. They both would have a win condition. And I think he's going for it here. Ladies and gentlemen, we have sudden death in a single game. That's right. Single game, sudden death. It is very, very difficult to get sudden death in a single game, ladies and gentlemen. What you have to have here is both Pokemon KO'd simultaneously to give each player a win condition. And that is going to happen here. Sha'ai is going to take his last two prizes. Connor is going to run his opponent out of Pokemon. They both have a win condition. And I think Connor here is doing that thing, and we've all done it on a number of occasions. Just thinking, this, this can't be the way the game ends. There has got to be something I can do. Now, the only alternative here would be Energy Max Elixir onto the Darkrai, and use Darkrai's attack to KO the Garchomp, but he hasn't got the energy. So the only things he can do are not attack, in which case Shai wins next turn by KOing literally anything on his field. He can't put a Fighting Fury Bout on the Shaman, and it'd be a KO even if he did. And even if he puts a Fighting Fury Bout on the Darkrai, it's fighting weak. So anything is going to get KO'd by Garchomp the next turn. And the only things Connor can use to attack and KO the Garchomp are the Hydreigon and the Giratina, both of whom will be KO'd by the Bursting Balloon. Connor cannot be playing either of the two trainer cards which get rid of Bursting Balloon because both of them have been taken out of the format. Now, I don't know. I don't know whether they're asking for ruling here. This is taking a very long time. The only possible things I can see Connor doing, there are only two ways I see Connor not not having to force sudden death. Number one, he plays a Max Elixir, gets two energy on a Darkrai and gets the win with Dark Pulse. Number two, he benches a non-fighting weak EX, something like another Giratina or another Hydreigon, and attaches a Fighting Fury Bout at the same time and then retreats. Because I don't think there is any other possible solution here. I don't think there is any other way that this game doesn't end in a tie. Well, and we don't have a tie because that's not an actual tie. What that is is sudden death. So both players will go ahead and both, both players will just shuffle up, put one card out and off we go. Because it's single game. You don't just start a second game. There is no second game. But if both players win simultaneously, you can't have that. So we would go to a sudden death situation where both players put out one card. 
Oh, sorry, one prize card, and then play until somebody takes a single prize. And if we go to sudden death, you've got to think that Connor is having the advantage here. He can go for something like a Darkrai or a an Eveltal, and free energy on either a Darkrai or an Eveltal... And I think that's what they're doing. I think they're going to sudden death, ladies and gentlemen. I don't think either player can get the win here. Or I suppose if you look at it a different way, both players are going to get the win here. That is superb. It's been a long time since I saw that. And right now, ladies and gentlemen, I was... I'm going to be honest. I was looking forward to this game when we started. And I... It had been built up. I'd had a lot of people messaging me or posting on Facebook, things along the lines of wait for round four. And there was part of me sitting here thinking, I mean, really? Can it be that good? I genuinely think it is. When was the last time you saw single game end with a double KO, which gave both players a win condition and gave us off to sudden death? I can't remember. I've seen it before, but it's been a while, ladies and gentlemen. It has been a while. So, we are going to shuffle up here. We're going to go to sudden death. As I've said, all Connor needs to do here is, and the flip, and we do flip again for sudden death. Um, it's not like, oh, Connor went first, so now Shai gets the choice. This is sudden death. It's like starting the game over again. So, we do have a coin flip for sudden death. It's not just, you know, Shai lost the coin flip first time around, so now he gets to choose. Nobody lost the game. We reflip. And it's going to be huge. Now, what needs to happen here? For Shai to have a chance, he needs to go first and he needs Connor to not have an explosive max elixir turn. Two energy on a Darkrai or two energy on an Eveltali X, either would go ahead and do 60 damage because Darkrai is 20 damage plus 20 for each dark energy attached to all of your Pokemon and Eveltal is 20 damage plus 20 for each energy attached to both actives. Two energy on either, and it's got to be dark, two dark energy on either would lead to 60 damage, which is enough to KO a Gibble. Connor winning the flip here is really, really bad for Sha'ai because that's going to give Connor two turns to get two energy on the field and KO a Gibble, and that's basically a given. Now, the other thing which would be huge here, and I don't know if he did or not, starting Talonflame. Talonflame has 130 HP. Now, don't get me wrong. Shai's only going to win this game with a Gibble. With a Garchomp, sorry. So he's still got to bench a Gibble, and that still will allow Connor to play a Lysander and get the KO. But at least he's got to play the Lysander to go ahead and get the KO. So if Connor goes first... He's in a huge advantage. If he goes second and goes nuts with max elixirs, he's at a huge advantage. Now, if Shai can go first and get a Gibble with an energy, and then on his second turn go Rare Candy, Garchomp, second energy, now he can one-hit KO and EX and win the game. But that's what it's going to take, ladies and gentlemen. Those are basically the win conditions for both the players here. It is much easier for Connor. Jai's deck here is built around playing it so that you've got... Oh, and he's drawn too many cards, so I think he's just going to put one back. Oh, no, sorry. Yeah, he put out six prizes. Remember, it's sudden death. It's one prize. Jai's deck here is made to... Oh, and there was a mulligan from Connor there. It's... Oh, it's a gibble. But he's going first. All right, now... He's got to get an energy down, and it's got to be a basic. It can't be a strong energy. We know that Connor plays Enhanced Hammer. So if he puts a strong energy down, he's not going to be able to do Garchomp's big attack if Connor drops an Enhanced Hammer. That is too big a risk to play. He's got to use Bite Off next turn. He's got to get a non-strong energy down on the field. That is absolutely crucial. Now, I love this Silent Lab here. Silent Lab basically says no basic Pokemon have abilities. That means no Hooper. That means no Shaman, which is going to make it much... Connor needs an explosive turn one. 
And we see the non-strong energy. That's key here. That is absolutely crucial. Love the Sycamore play here. I know we got rid of two versus Seeker. Although we also got rid of a Lysander. So if he draws into a versus Seeker, he can have a Lysander next turn. Um, he's got a Bursting Balloon. Might as well play it. I don't think it's going to do much good. Because if Connor attacks, it's either going to one-hit KO a Gibble. Or it's going to be a Shaman that does 30 damage and then back into his hand. So the Bursting Balloon is superfluous, but it's just one fewer card that he can draw next turn. Oh, and he doesn't have... Oh, the, the, looking at his hand there. This is another reason why you would play a single Shaman. He doesn't have a rare candy in hand. He does have an N. An N is going to give him one card. He cannot N himself to one and draw a rare candy Garchomp. That's two cards. It is impossible for him to get the Garchomp. And let's make no mistake about this, ladies and gentlemen. He needs the Garchomp. Otherwise, he's rocking a 60 HP Gibble. Now, what he could do is, as I said before, use Sandtomb there, hitting for 20 a turn. But that's a lot to ask for not get a retreat. Oh, and there we see a big sycamore. Now he could there. He could have end Sha'i to one. And there is an argument for doing so. Oh, there's a fighting fury about. Not that it really matters. It's weak to fighting. Now remember, he can't use basic Pokemon abilities because of the silent lab. So unless he's drawn into... Silent Lab here. Now, one one thing Connor could have done, it's a ballsy play. I will give him that. He could have played the N. Both players go down to one card in hand. But he knows that Shy's win condition here is Rare Candy, Garchomp, Strong Energy. You ain't getting that off an N to one, even though you N to one, and then you get to draw a second card at the beginning of your turn. You ain't getting everything you need off that. Although I suppose he could draw into a Sycamore or a Versus Seeker. But it's far more likely he's already got one in hand than he draws one. So this is going to be a very, very interesting turn. And it, this is basically the turn. Nothing relevant has a Fighting Fury Bout attached. The Hydreigon has got a Floatstone attached. The Darkrai is weak to fighting, so that Fighting Fury Bout is essentially irrelevant. So if... And it doesn't look that likely now if Sha'i here has rare candy Garchomp energy he's probably going to win the game next turn he'll probably KO a strong energy sorry now as it stands he would have to top deck the rare candy and then play the end what he can't do is what's he got 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 oh he doesn't get it but he's got Sand Tomb. I've been saying about Sand Tomb all game, it has come to fruition. And the Sand Tomb, combined with the Silent Lab, is a brilliant, lovely play. Oh, and it's not... He plays the Sycamore here. He's just discarded the Hooper and the Shaman. So even if Connor gets a Counter Stadium, that Hooper's not in his deck anymore. This is really, really nice play here. And now we get the Aveltal. Now if Aveltal gets a Fighting Fury Bout, then it's going to be big. But there's already two Fighting Fury Bouts on the field. Does he have another one? Now again, we know that Shai has... Oh, there... Okay, now we've got the Parallel City. Now Connor can potentially go nuts with Shamans. But does he even play switching? There's the Max Elixir. Is he going to hit it? He doesn't. He does. Oh, and in a deck that should hit that about 50% of the time, that is when you really need the 50% to be on your side. Really, really clutch play there, hitting that. But he can't retreat. And in a deck that plays Float Stones, oh, we know he's got a Versus Seeker there. In a deck that plays both Float Stones and High Dragon, You've got to think he plays very few switching cards. Maybe none. He can't retreat because of Sandtomb. That Hydreigon is stuck in the active. And bearing in mind, there is not paying the energy, not Flowstone, there is no retreat. 
There's the Garchomp. There's the end. If he hits an energy here off this end to one, he will win this game. And that is not going to be good. Santum, it's all about Santum. This is a very, very, very risky play here. We know that Connor has got two energy on that Darkrai. We know that Connor has got a Versus Seeker. It's a Sycamore. Next turn, you've got to think next turn Shy's got the win. But he hasn't got the win this turn. This is one of the tensest games of Pokemon I have seen in a long time. And long-time viewers of this channel will know, I've seen a lot of games of Pokemon. Oh, and there we go. So he uses the bite-off attack to attach to himself. I messed that up. There was one tournament. I think I threw away a tournament once because I forgot you could attach to yourself. And had I done so, I'd have been guaranteed the win. That's upsetting. So it wasn't bite-off, sorry. It was Turbo Assault. So we see the Turbo Assault there, 460. Now, oh, and he hits a second. He hits another Max Elixir. Oh, my. Oh, my goodness. He's hit the escape rope. That's game. He top decks the escape rope, forcing Connor to either put the Darkrai or the Hydreigon into the active, either of whom can be KO'd with a bite off. Would you believe the top decks? Connor there. He was hitting what he needed to. He was playing very aggressively. He was drawing very aggressively. He had the Sycamores. He hit two Max Elixir, which he was not hitting in game one. It looked like it was all going Connor's way. Sha'ai there. He couldn't KO that Eveltal EX. There was nothing he could do. The And he, we knew he didn't have a Lysander. He had to... And we knew that even if he played a Sycamore, he could only do a maximum of 180 damage and that wouldn't have been enough the only way mr burton wins that game is by top decking an escape rope or a lysander and he does i don't know the odds of that ladies and gentlemen but it was not large now if that is not a game of pokemon that gets you excited for playing and watching pokemon again i'm out ladies and gentlemen I told you at the, right at the beginning of this video, I was very honest. I said, you know what? I've been told this game is good. I hope I've not been lied to. I enjoyed that game. Not just because of Garchomp. That was a back and forth game with lots of key plays. And oh my goodness, this was fun. So, you know the deal, ladies and gentlemen. Comment. If ever there was a comment needed to be done, this is a game to comment on. I don't know, maybe a hashtag go chomp or something like that. Make sure you click that like button because how could you not have liked this game? Click the subscribe button and if you already have, get a friend to subscribe on your behalf. And of course, look after yourselves until next time. Always the most important thing. I'll be back with round five very soon indeed. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Ross and you've been watching PTCG Radio.